Volunteering is giving. Sharing, standing by others, supporting causes you care about, and creating a better future for everyone. This is why more and more entities support volunteering to achieve the sustainable development goals. Volunteers make a difference to the lives of many. Join us and become a United Nations volunteer. Welcome everyone to this live chat. As announced, we have two distinguished guests today who will share with us their experience working as UN volunteers in South Sudan. We have currently 726 UN volunteers contributing their time and skills to the mandate of the UN mission, agencies, funds and program operating in South Sudan. 48% out of our serving volunteers are women. So we will be together in this live chat for the next 15 to 20 minutes to answer some of your questions received so far, but please don't be shy to leave your comments or pose any further questions in the comment box in the social media that you are participating. Also, feel free to tag any of your friends whom you think could be interested in our chat today. Now, I leave the floor to our distinguished guests to introduce themselves and we kick off the discussion. So Maria Chilieja and Maria Selim, the floor is yours. Um, hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, so my name is Maria Selika, I'm originally from Poland and I'm an architect and engineer by profession. Uh, I have worked all my life abroad in places like China, Europe and the UK where I mostly worked in the commercial architecture. Um, and then, luckily, I've got an opportunity with UN Habitat to work in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, which was pretty cool. But then, most importantly, I became familiar with uh, the UN system and what UN stands for and how we share the same passions and that they have held so for so many years. But uh, somehow I was never really implemented into my work. So, yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Maria Selim, uh, we don't hear you. Can you please try to check your mic? Hi, I hope you can hear me now. Yes. Um, my name is uh, Maria Selim, and I'm uh, grateful uh, for you to have me here with my namesake, Maria, as well. Um, I'm from India. I've been working in the development sector, um, and, and my work has focused, been focused on gender and gender-related issues for a really long time now. Uh, my first interaction with uh, the UN was uh, when I was invited as a minority fellow to the OHCHR and then later uh, to mentor the same group. And that's when I learned about the different mechanisms, the peacekeeping missions, etc. at the UN. And it intrigued me and I really wanted to be part of it, uh, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a more long term sort of a way. And when this opportunity came through, I immediately jumped and I joined. Fantastic. Um... You know, there is a myth going around that the living conditions in South Sudan are pretty difficult, especially um, for a woman to live there. So since we have you in this live chat, can you tell us more about that? How are the living conditions and, um, and uh, how is it to live in South Sudan? Maria Chilieka, maybe you want to start? Uh Yes, absolutely. Um, so just to start, I remember when I first got the onomis offer, I remember reading into job descriptions line like occasional power blackouts, water shortages, um, security level disclosed at the arrival. And um, I really didn't know what to think, but uh, I thought to myself, how bad can it be? And then after arrival, I realized it is truly not a five-star resort, not one or actually not resort at all, but it is totally manageable. And as an engineering professional, because that's what I do here, uh, I can tell you that the conditions uh, are always improving. So if I'm talking about the conditions, what do I mean by that? Um, so in Unmis, we live in camps in prefabricated modular buildings. 
uh, we have our own ablution units. Uh, we have uh, many of us have their own kitchens. And I have to tell you that actually we are really lucky to live in camps, which are more like independent villages. And this is not only for obvious reason, which is obviously security, but uh, we generate our own electricity. Uh, we have always uh, water reserves. Um, and uh, we don't really have to leave camps unless uh, specified otherwise. Um, it, we don't really leave camps this day, especially during COVID. And there are some fun places like cafeterias, uh, restaurants. My camp uh, even has a bank. So that's, you know, fun. And yes, we have 4G in South Sudan and a oh. air conditioning. So it's really manageable. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that you have um, the 4G and also that you say that most of the accommodations, they have um, their own ablutions and kitchen and the, the living conditions have improved from the last time that I visited back in 2015. Uh, Maria it Celine. Is mostly, it is mostly due to the hard work of the engineering section, which I am part of. So <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> Definitely heads off to the engineering section. Um, Maria Salim, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, you know, taking forward what uh, Maria said. See, when I decided to come to South Sudan, I knew I'm not going to a holiday destination. I knew this is not a vacation space, but I was not aware of some of the things that I later became aware of, which it'll be nice to share with the audience. You know, for instance, when I thought, oh, I'm going to South Sudan. I told my sisters, oh, come visit and, you know, stay with me. And then I was said, I was told, no, this is a non-family duty station. You know, you can't have family visiting. So that's one challenge. But at the same time, you know, we have to realize that we are coming into a country which is the youngest country in the world, you know. And uh, despite that, when, when I came to South Sudan, when I came to the UN compound, uh, I was told I'll be living in a container and it's going to be very difficult, etc. Well, my container had an AC. Uh, it had a fridge, it had a washing machine, and it had a microwave. And I was extremely grateful because when the, the mission knows that it's not an easy place to stay in, but it also makes an effort to make sure that your stay is as comfortable as it can be. And uh, mm. so uh, there are a few timings that is a problem with you not being able to use public transport, etc. But there are also means that the mission has in put in place so that your stay is not as uncomfortable as you might initially think it is. And people are nice and kind. You get a ride home when you're walking and someone sees you with a big bag. People stop by in the campus and they give you a ride back. They offer you their homes in the other compound if you're living in a container and facing difficulties. So it's, it's, it's like family living as well, I would say. I'm glad to hear that. To go back to my question, I will ask you to share if there is any particular challenge, especially as a woman that you may face in the UN compound or living in South Sudan more in general. Would you would you think of one or? Frankly, if I may, um, I've I come from India and you know that uh, safety situation in India is not so great and I'm not ashamed to say that. However, in the past five months that I've stayed here, there's nothing specifically difficult that I would say as a woman that I've faced. You know, I cannot drive, but that's a problem with anxiety issues I have. I'm not able to drive. That has nothing to do with my gender. Um, I, I personally have not felt anything specifically difficult that women would only face here. Fantastic. I'm very glad to hear that because in, in a way that breaks that myth that we open this live chat that living conditions in South Sudan, particularly for women, are difficult. And since we are at this topic, I will ask both of you a question. Why do you think more women should join the UN mission funds and programs operating in South Sudan? Maria, you want to go first? Uh, sure. So just uh, coming back to your question, it is just to highlight so uh, nobody gets it wrong. Living in the mission is not exactly really easy, but you do get used to it. And then we do realize how much, how privileged we are back in Europe and uh, living in a camp uh, in a peacekeeping mission like Olmis. Uh, comes with the fact that we live in the closed environment, in a confined area environment with many, many people. 
and we really have to learn how to work and live with the same people. And in peacekeeping, we work not only with civilians, but daily with military, with troops and staff officers. So we get to uh, met, meet every possible type of personalities, cultures, anything. But at the end of the day, we're all here together and then we all understand the challenges. So somehow we're becoming um, a family going through this not very easy lifestyle together. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Thank you, Maria Chiliega. Maria Salim, what, what would you add? Yeah, I would completely echo what uh, Maria is saying. And in addition, I'd like to say that I would encourage more and more women to apply as UN volunteers at the UN mission and, and at other missions uh, also, because, you know, my work here, I realized that women, there are women in leadership uh, positions in all of UNMIS. And it's so amazing and inspiring to meet these women. Um, it's also a myth a lot of times that volunteers are not as important. And, you know, I mean, like I started and Maria also shared, we work all over the world. We work for many, many years. Here, I also get an opportunity, for instance, to I have trained very senior commanders. Um, I mean, I, I'm 34. There have been people who are 60, 65 sitting in front of me and I'm sort of training them on issues like conflict related sexual violence. Um, uh, my opinions are given as much importance when we are sitting at uh, meetings. I mean, the chief discusses all of the issues with me, just like she discusses it with others who are not volunteers. So this is an opportunity for a lot of people um, to learn. And it's very important also that we see how we are contributing, you know, as, as women volunteers who are leaving, you're leaving your country and you're coming to a conflict situation here in uh, South Sudan with certain expertise and experience. And it's always great to share best practices. There are so many things that I see are in common with women in my country that I worked with on sexual violence related issues. And women here, I went to Tambura. I was lucky to go on a mission. It was a very difficult mission. There were no toilets. There was no electricity. But I can't tell you the kind of motivation that I came back with uh, and the fact that I'm a volunteer I'm very proud of that you know I'm very proud that despite being a volunteer I'm there doing things that everybody else is doing so yeah yeah Maria um, I have actually pretty similar experience if I may <laughs> please Maria I, just, I just wanted to say that uh, work Work with it is really uh, very much challenging, as Maria said. It's uh, it's very unusual, and uh, we struggle every day with resources, with staffing, with uh, very difficult challenges. But at the end of the day, it is very satisfying. Once we, after all the struggle and after all the frustration, we deliver very unusual things. Like I just to mention, for example, in the past year, I have worked on uh, on infrastructure for troops, like loads of toilets and kitchens. But also, um, I had a chance to deliver PCR lab, and I worked on helicopter landing pads and various um, security projects, which probably I'm not allowed to discuss. But uh, just things that we don't see normally. So it's amazing experience. Fantastic. Um, I think we close on these very positive and inspiring notes. Um, I will close by thanking first our uh, distinguished guests today, Maria Chiliega and Maria Selim, for being with us today. Also, notes of thanks go to their uh, sections for releasing them to be part of this uh, live chat. Thank you to Alba and Nina in the background for, uh, for managing the comments and the questions of the audience. It was great to have you, and let me take this opportunity to remind uh, everyone to follow us on our social media channels like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Again, thank you very much, and see you in our next live chat. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Volunteering is giving, sharing, standing by others, supporting causes you care about, and creating a better future for everyone. This is why more and more entities support volunteering to achieve the sustainable development goals. Volunteers make a difference to the lives of many. Join us and become a United Nations volunteer.